Welcome to the fourth and final segment in Kent ISD's Remote Learning Boot Camp Recording, Video, and Screencasting module. Um, so far, you've done a fantastic job of putting together a video and editing it and sharing that with us. Now, we're going to take a look at how we take things and we share those videos once we've edited them into a place where our students can get them, their hands on them. So the first and foremost, most important thing is that we get our video instruction in a place that is easy for our students to get access to. Um, so for some of us that might be YouTube, for some of us that might be Google Drive, for some of us that's putting it into our LMS or into Google Classroom. Um, wherever your students are most, that's the place you want to get it into. So there's a few different ways to go about it and we'll talk about what those look like in a second here. Some things to consider as you um, start to think about sharing. One is copyright and fair use. If you've got like chunks of material that you know are copyrighted that are inside of your video, you need to be careful with that and make sure that you are within the fair use guidelines. Um, I'm not going to spend time in this video, but I'll make sure to link a um, resource for you in our unit planner that you can go back and take a look at to make sure that you're within fair use guidelines. Um, Student privacy is also important. Thinking about, oh, did I talk about specific students? What types of information did I share about them? Um, and just making sure that we are being careful with their, their privacy um, and avoiding any kind of um, infraction on FERPA or HIPAA law. That being said, um, I'm going to show you a few different things. I already told you a little bit about YouTube and what my thoughts were on that. But YouTube is the place that I think um, most of us will want to go, especially if you're using YouTube Editor. It's already there, so you really don't have to do anything extra. Um, it works on any device. Even the mobile app for YouTube is fantastic. It's free, it's pretty user-friendly, and it has sharing options a lot like what you'd see with Google Drive, if you're familiar with that. Um, this, those sharing options being public, unlisted, and private. Uh, this video on the top uh, will show you a little bit about how you can go about uploading videos. So if you used a tool outside of YouTube Editor, how you get them up on YouTube after that. And the, the video on the bottom actually goes through and explains what these three settings mean. Okay, So you may want to take a minute. It's a very short video, um, but it will talk you through those so that you can understand those a, a little bit better. Another option you have is Google Drive, and Google Drive is probably something you're already using, so you're probably familiar with it. Um, it's easy to control the sharing because it works just like a Google Doc. I put together a little video here on the side, so if you choose to go this route um, and put your stuff onto Google Drive, you can see exactly how that looks using either a PC, a Mac device, or a mobile device. Um, but the sharing options there are private, anyone with the link, or people in your organization with the link. So that means for me, my organization is Kent ISD. I could set that up so that only people in, in Kent ISD could see that. So if I do have some sensitive student information, um, that might be an option to use as well so that it doesn't get spread way beyond the scope of what I was hoping for it to be shared in. Lastly, Google Classroom is a very popular tool around our, our region. Um, so Google Classroom has really awesome built-in features, including the fact that you can just record a video directly in Google Classroom if you're using the mobile app. Um, or you can upload something that you've recorded before. So fantastic tool, really easy. Um, again, you're probably already using it. Uh, and it automatically shares it with all the students that are in your class and no, no one else beyond that. So um, it might be a good option for you. Okay. So we've reached the very end of the line. At this point, we want to see that you can actually get that video that you've created, edited, and now take that and share it someplace that your students, or in this case, us, um, as your instructors, can go in and see it. So share your final video with us. Make sure that if you do it through the Google Drive option, that you give us access to go see it. Same thing with YouTube. If you go with a private option on YouTube, just make sure you give us, um, using the edtech at Kent ISD email, which I'll put on the screen in a second, um, so that we can all see it. Once you've pasted that link into the checklist, you are done with this module. Congratulations. You've earned two sketches, and we really appreciate the time that you took to put into um, becoming better at creating video instruction. One thing I want to send you off with is that video isn't just for you. So you can use your, um, you can have your students use it too. 
Um, I've mentioned a tool a little bit throughout this course called Flipgrid. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you may want to check it out. It's a great tool to converse back and forth with students via video. Um, that's all I'll say about that, but you can also let your students create videos um, as part of the work that they're doing for you. If you have any questions or feedback on this module, we'd love to hear from you. Our team's email account is edtech at kentisd.org. That's the one you can share your products with at the end here, um, and, and just make sure that we have access to it. It's been a pleasure working with you in this module. I look forward to seeing you again. Have a great day.